Hi everyone, this is Soumya at this side. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I know it's a little bit different intro, but there are different things that I'm trying out. I hope you like it. Uh, today's video uh, will be a low-level design of uh, the Stack Overflow website. If you are a software engineer, then I am pretty much sure that you do know what Stack Overflow is. So uh, stay tuned and watch this video to the end. I will be using uh, solid principles, runtime polymorphism, inheritance, and most of the OOPS concept and design pattern to come up with a robust solution for the problem at hand. And if you do want to be a part of my mock interview series, then watch this video completely. I will tell you how you can be part of that series. And I have changed my Instagram handle and I have linked it in the description below and in all the other videos. If you do want to connect with me and discuss anything and everything that you like, uh, then please go there and follow me and hit me up with a message. And I will be more than happy to help you. Last but not the least, I would like to say if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, then please do so already. I will upload more such content for you guys regularly. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to yet another low-level design video. As you have seen in this video, we will be discussing the low-level design for the Stack Overflow website. I know it has been quite a while that I have not uploaded a low-level design video, but that just has been my schedule of late. It's, it is becoming it was becoming difficult for me to get time to actually write a good design and then shoot the video edit it and upload it for you guys but yes here i am as promised i'm uploading another uh, low level design video uh, i i do hope that you really uh, like this video and obviously if you have not yet subscribed to my channel then subscribe already so in today's video, we will be discussing about Stack Overflow. If you are a software engineer or an aspiring software engineer, then I bet that you have heard about Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow, I will just quickly show you what Stack Overflow is so that you guys have a decent idea about it. So Stack Overflow is a website which is used to billions of people out there to actually you know, search for different questions, add questions, get their questions, answered by the other community members who are active there so it's a question and answer platform where a person can ask a question where a person can search for questions view their answers give an answer to a question add comments you know give up quotes and so on and so forth if we take a quick tour of the page we can see that you know there uh, there are multiple questions that someone can ask uh, these are the questions this is the description of the question similarly every question will have an upward or a downward button can have multiple comments associated with the question and then can have you know multiple upwards and downwards for each and every comment that is associated can have multiple answers one of the answer will be selected or check marked which is basically it has been accepted as the correct answer the other ones might not have the check mark but might be correct as well but uh, who cares right now <laughs> right now what we will do is we will go through the requirements that we have set for ourselves that we will be following to come up with a robust low level design for the code so the requirements that we will be solving is any non-member that is guest can only search or view the questions and answers but they will not be able to add an answer they will not be able to add a comment uh, upward or downward an answer or a question or a comment which means only read activity is uh, accepted for a guest any kind of write activity is not at all accepted from a guest second is members should be able to post new questions members should be able to add answers add comments to any question or answers can upward or downward a question answer or a comment can flag a question so that the moderators can take a look at it uh, moderators can close a question or you know undelete a question that has already been deleted uh, members can vote to delete a question members can vote to close a question and then uh, if the members are helpful that is they answer more questions they answer different kinds of questions they answer questions from different sections they will be awarded badges 
as per the questions that they answer, as per the sections that they answer, and this is basically a badge of honor that uh, uh, any uh, user is awarded. Yeah, let's get started by coding the solution. So here, as we have done in all the previous videos, we will start by defining the basic actors that are present. So uh, the basic actor that is present is obviously the user. Uh, so we will first start by defining the user class. This user is the base class which is basically will contain an integer id which is the guest id which will uniquely identify a particular guest a particular user in one particular session and a search object that will allow the guest to search different kinds of questions based upon the search string that the guest provides apart from that it will also contain one api which is the get questions api that will take in as input the search string and will return a list of questions associated with the search string that is present here now uh, we will go ahead and define the member class uh, member class uh, will be extending the user class because user class is a base class and it will be extending the user class as obviously a member should be able to search a question and see their answers uh, and it should not only be as restricted to guests, uh, obviously, uh, but yes, um, obviously the member should be able to search a question and get uh, the answers associated for the question that the member is searching. Uh, so yes, uh, member will be extending user. A person will only become member after that person has created an account. Hence, member will contain an account object associated with it. Similarly, as discussed, a member will be given a list of badges based upon how much that particular portion is contributing back to the Stack Overflow community. So it will have a list of badge associated with it. Apart from that, there will be a host of APIs which are present in uh, the member class. First and foremost will be the add question API, which will take in as input a question complex object. Then it will contain add comment API because member should be able to add a comment. And that comment the member can add to a question, that comment a member can add to an answer, that comment a member can add to a comment as well. So here we will take uh, entity as uh, the first input and whatever comment that the member wants to add as the second input. If this entity is the base type and it will be further subdivided into question, answer and comment. Hence what this will do is basically it will allow us to use runtime polymorphism to actually add comments on the fly to a question, to a answer or to a comment directly without having to replicate the same logic for each of the entities separately apart from that similarly a member can add an answer as well uh, this answer can only be added to a question hence it will contain two inputs as parameters which is the question and the answer uh, apart from that the member can vote a particular uh, entity and can give any kind of vote for example a member can upvote an entity a member can downvote an entity a member can vote to close an entity a member can vote to delete an entity hence it contains two inputs the entity type and an enum vote type apart from that obviously a question can have multiple tags as we have seen uh, so yes uh, and a member can add a tag to a particular question a member can flag any particular entity which means a member can flag a question can flag an answer can flag a comment and so on and so forth and here since a member can flag any three of these uh, we decided to use the entity object here uh, again uh, leveraging runtime polymorphism now we will go ahead and define the account complex object that is present here the account complex object will contain a name address and account id associated with it it will contain the username password and email and there are two things that it will also contain it will contain the account status that will tell whether or not this is an active account or a closed account or a flagged account and so on and so forth as well as it will also contain reputation points so in stack overflow if you see every account has a point associated with it that point increases based upon the number of questions that you answer hence this hence this uh, number of questions that you answer and it's an integer point Hence, uh, which is known as reputation. Now we will go ahead and define the other members that are present here. Uh, now there can be multiple member types, right? One which is the normal natural members, which like you and me are going to add questions, add answers, add comments, and so on and so forth. So they are the basic member types. Now there can be some special members as well. For example, there can be moderators who are 
obviously members and apart from being members they have certain extra permissions they can close a question they can restore a question which has already been closed hence we create another uh, class moderator which is extending the member type because they are actually members itself apart from being members they have been given certain extra responsibilities that only they can perform hence we created a class moderator which extends the class member and has two uh, apis associated with it which is closing a question and restoring a question another type of member that we have is an admin which apart from doing all the things that a member can do the admin can also block a member or unblock a member now we will go ahead and uh, implement the account status enum that we saw here the account status enum is basically an enum which contains blocked active and closed account which we will use to determine whether or not a particular member has been blocked for answering whether or not a particular member is active or the account has already been closed now as discussed the vote type enum will contain upward downward close vote and delete vote uh, now we had introduced a concept of badge there. Badge will only contain a name and a description because a badge contains just these two things and nothing else. Uh, now we will go ahead and implement the entity class that we are talking about here. It is very important class. It is a very important piece of our code. Now uh, this entity class as I have discussed will be the base class that will be defining all the different kinds of entities that it can have. As we have seen before, there can be a question kind of an entity, there can be a comment kind of an entity and there can be an answer kind of an entity. And uh, since these three are the kinds of entities, these will be extending this basic entity class which will have some basic set of you know data members associated with it as well as a basic set of APIs associated with it. And then the other classes will correspondingly have something more specific to that that particular class hence making full use of in inheritance here so the entity class will always have an entity id that will uniquely identify that particular piece of question that particular piece of answer or that particular piece of comment present uh, apart from that any entity will be created by one particular member uh, so an answer will be created by a person, a comment will be added by a person or a question will be added by a person. Hence, it will have the information of that particular creator inside it. Uh, apart from that, it will contain a map of vote type and the integers present and vote type can be upward, downward, close vote and delete vote. And correspondingly, if someone upwards that particular entity, be it a question, comment or an answer, it will find this map present for that particular entity and increase the integer value corresponding to that particular key. If it's an upward, it will increase one upward. If it's downward, it will increase one downward. If it's close word, it will increase one close word. And if it's delete word, it will increase one delete word. But it will always have a created date, uh, which is the date at which this particular entity got created. And then any kind of entity can have a list of comments associated with it. So these are the basic data members that uh, will always be present in all the three different kinds of entities. Uh, apart from that, we will have uh, certain APIs, which is again accessible for all the three entities. Hence, I have decided to specifically keep them inside the entity uh, base class. It will be basically a flag entity API, vote entity API and uh, add comment API. The flag entity API will take in the detail of uh, the member who decided to flag that particular entity. The vote type will take in as input the vote type for which it will be incrementing the map by one and then add comment uh, which will contain or which will take in as input a comment object and it will add that comment to that particular entity. Now we will go ahead and describe the entities that are present. For example, the comment uh, entity will only contain a message object. The question entity will contain a host of things because we can add many things to a particular question. A comment can only contain a text uh, comment that is present here, uh, but a question can have multiple different aspects associated with it. If we closely look at the question which is present here, we can see that it was asked by someone, but it had been edited by some other person. As per our requirements, we will only consider that a question only can be edited. Since a question can be edited, the question should have a history of edits associated with it so that it is easier to audit and understand who edited what and what needs to be removed. Hence, it will have a list of edit history associated with it. 
Apart from that, a particular question can have multiple answers associated with it. So it will have a list of answers associated with it. Apart from that, it will also have a list of tags associated with it because we can add multiple tags to a particular question. For example, if we see in this question, we have added Node.js, Amazon Web Services, uh, Lambda and API Gateway as tags to this particular question. Uh, then a question will have a title, a question will have a description and a question can have a status. We will have two more APIs, the add question API and the add tag API. The add question API will take in whatever uh, the question object has and add that question into our database. And the add tag API will take in as input the tag associated and will try to add that tag to this particular question object. Now we will go ahead and define the answer object present here. Uh, the answer object will contain obviously the answer and apart from that it will contain whether or not that particular answer has been accepted. So there will be a boolean which is, is accepted. If it is true then we will show a check mark uh, beside the box. If it is false we will not show the check mark beside the box and uh, an API which is an add answer API which will contain or which will take in as input a question to which that particular answer should be added and corresponding we will update our database and add that answer to that particular question. Now what we will do is we will go ahead and define the question status as I have told it can, a question can be an active question, a closed question, a flagged question, a duplicate question, a bounded question and so on and so forth. So there can be you know different kinds of question statuses whatever we feel like we can add it here to define what kind of question it is and based upon whatever we are adding here we can have checks on UI side on different services that will use these that will use this to inherently filter out questions that they want. Uh, similarly, we will go ahead and define the tag class. The tag class will contain uh, the name and the description. And last but not the least, we will go ahead and define the edit history as we have suggested. The edit history uh, should be uniquely identifiable by a ID, which will be the edit history ID. It will contain the uh, member who suggested that edit or who has edited that particular question. So it will contain that particular member's information in as part of the creator. It will contain the creation date. It is the date at which this particular edit was suggested. It will contain the states of the question, the previous state and the updated question. So that if required, we can effectively compute diffs present here. By this, we come to an end of this uh, low level design of stack overflow for the you know type of requirements that we had taken up. I really hope that you uh, liked the way I have handled uh, all the use cases that are present here. Uh, I would like to call out that obviously we have used most of the solid principles. We have used uh, for runtime polymorphism, inheritance and most of object oriented design principles out here to come up with a robust design for the question and the requirements at hand. Obviously, if you have any questions with respect to this design, you can comment down below. I will make sure I will try to answer it uh, to the best of my abilities. I really hope that you liked this. And if you did, then please do not forget to hit the like button and share it among your friends and share it as much as possible. Uh, it will help my channel a lot. Uh, and uh, if you have not, and if you have not subscribed already, then I suggest that you do subscribe. I will be uh, updating more such content uh, regularly. Uh, not only LLD, I also update many other contents and I take mock interviews and update them as well, upload them as well. Uh, and I, I think so, it will be extremely helpful for anyone who is trying to prepare for uh, software interviews, software engineering interviews. Uh, please, if you have any video suggestions for me, leave it in the comments below. It will help me a lot. If you want to be a part of my mock interview series, then I have my uh, Instagram handle in uh, the description below. You can go there, follow me and send me a DM saying that you want to be a part of uh, the mock interview series. I will make sure that I take your mock interview. Uh, that will be it for today, guys. Thank you. Have a nice day. Das Vidanya.